The service begins on page 78 in the Book of Common Prayer with an opening sentence. Send out your light and truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. We continue with a confession of sin from page 79 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Invitatory and Psalter begin on page 80 in the Book of Common Prayer. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for the proper 25 is Psalm 1, which begins on page 585 in the Book of Common Prayer. We'll read it responsibly by half verse. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seat of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord. They meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do will prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff, which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes. Nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. But the way of the wicked is doomed. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Leviticus. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel, and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart any one of your kin. You shall not reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people. But you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first response this morning is Canticle 12, a song of creation, which we'll read together responsively by alternating verse. Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, you angels and all powers of the Lord, O heavens and all waters above the heavens. Sun and moon and stars of the sky, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, every shower of rain and fall of dew, all winds and fire and heat. Winter and summer, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O oh, chill and cold, drops of dew and flakes of snow. Frost and cold, ice and sleet, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O oh, nights and days, O oh, shining light and enfolding dark. Storm clouds and thunderbolts, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let the earth glorify the Lord, praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O mountains and hills, and all that grows upon the earth. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O springs of water, seas and streams, O whales and all that move in the waters. All birds of the air, glorify the Lord, praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O beasts of the wild, and all you flocks and herds. O men and women everywhere, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let us glorify the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. A reading from the first letter to the Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain, but though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing hymn 444, a, cant a paraphrase of Canticle 16, Blessed Be the God of Israel. Bye. 
reading from Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that by David, by the spirit calls him Lord saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can this, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer. Nor from that day, did anyone dare to ask him any more questions? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's October. And some traditional things in St. Francis aren't happening. There was no fall fest this year or uh, fall carnival or any of those things. We haven't been together since March although we did have some two outdoor gatherings. But this past week, I was reminded that the seasons do change and come about just as they should. Um, This yesterday and on Friday, I tried to deal with all the leaves that had fallen down in my yard. And I live in among a lot of trees and that's a pretty hefty lift. Fortunately, I no longer have children who jump in the leaves and and send them flying all over the place once you've uh, raked them up or blown them together. Um, But I knew it was that time and in my house, I get to see the seasons change because we have a lot of windows. And so the light during the year goes from that starkness of winter to to the greening of spring, to the deep greens of summer, 
And now we're in the golden part of the year where the light is becoming more apparent again and the leaves being gold and brown and rust and red give a whole different look. And in the church year, we're beginning to come to an end as well. The last week in November will flip from this year of A and the reading of Matthew to year B and the reading of Mark. And in this, we get an extended view in Matthew of Jesus's last week. A couple of weeks ago, uh, Phil talked very eloquently about this in his sermon. And during this last week, once Jesus had overturned the money changers temp uh, tables in the temple, he was on a protracted campaign challenged by those who differed with him about his view of the world and what he was trying to accomplish. Each week over the past four or five weeks, we've encountered Jesus encountering people who wanted to challenge what he was all about. We encountered priests from the temple, scribes who wrote, who wrote and kept and learned about the law. We've dealt with Pharisees who are uh, an unofficial group within uh, Judaism who were really committed to living holy lives. Last week, or in between last week and this week, if we had just sequentially read every one of these encounters, we would have dealt with the Sadducees. And the Sadducees challenged Jesus too. And so finally, we get a subset within the Pharisees this week who want to come at him one more time and see if they can't trip him up. And so a lawyer, let's hear it for the lawyers, challenges him and says, teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Now, the thing you have to remember, and this is true even today, it's hard to delineate which part of the law is the most important. In Jesus's time, it, it was held traditionally that there were 613 laws, some of which were moral and ethical laws and some of them were religious. But in the mind of faithful Jews of Jesus's time, there was really no difference. They went together to begin to undo that thread of the law of either ceremony or, or ethics would have unraveled the whole thing. We understand that. If we who are faithful followers of Jesus, we argue all the time about what can be undone and what has to be held together. Here in the United States, as a country, we argue about the Constitution. Can there be a part that gets ticked out there and still the Constitution remains? Or what part if overturned, unravels the whole thing. And this was what Jesus faced on that day when the Pharisees came up to him. So how do you answer this question in a way that doesn't put you in opposition to those who oppose you? And as we know from the last week, it was dangerous to oppose these people. They wanted nothing less than to destroy Jesus. So Jesus comes up with one of his answers that is wonderful because it affirms the law. It affirms the tradition of the people. Because at the top of the law is this important moment where you have to acknowledge that you have to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. God is first. But what goes with it is this love of neighbor. And Jesus wasn't the first person to think this up because as we read from Leviticus this morning, in chapter 19, verse 18, it tells the people of Israel to love your neighbor as yourself. 
So for at least a thousand years before, Jesus, the people of Israel already knew what the answer was. And then Jesus craftily says, and upon these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. They are both important, the law and the prophets. Jesus, in the Gospel of Matthew, affirms the law. In fact, in Matthew 5, 17, in the Sermon on the Mount, he says, I did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law, every jot and tittle. Jesus knew how important the law was, and even though, as a committed Pauline, I, I think that the law is important, but Paul recognized, and Jesus before him, that the problem isn't really with the law. The problem is with us, you and me. We want, most of us, to really fulfill the law, but we find it really hard to do. And the law isn't really all that complicated if you break it down to what Jesus just said. It's pretty simple, but it's really hard. And so, challenged by this, Jesus sets up information for the people who follow him. The whole Gospel of Matthew, in fact, is an extended reflection on what the community of Jesus, which is an offshoot of God's original community of the people of God, how they would behave with each other. The Sermon on the Mount, the parables, and the two great commandments. All of that was given to us now, the question is, for us, do we live in a community that's comprehensive enough and challenging enough that our neighbor doesn't simply affirm our priors, but challenges us to live the law? And that's a really hard thing. If you go back to chapter 19 in Leviticus, it, say, it, it challenges the people of God to reprove their neighbor, not to not reprove their neighbor, but to reprove their neighbor, to make sure their neighbor is being faithful, not because they hate their neighbor, but because they love their neighbor. In this freedom-oriented society, in this liberty-oriented society, we often think that we're free agents, that reproof is a violence against us, and yet God thought it was a way of love. The people of Israel thought it was a way of love. And I think that even Jesus would say it was a way of love. We have to be careful with that. We have to be careful with how we express our love so that it doesn't move over from the kind of mercy, grace, and judgment that God would issue into condemnation. Jesus affirms his authority, by the way, in the next part of this story, where he's talking to the Pharisees and he challenges them finally to say, who is the son of David? And what does that title mean? If Jesus is the son of David and the whole gospel of Matthew has been telling us that, then he's more than just a son of David. He is Messiah and son of God too. And so that, that paradox is offered to us. St. Francis is in that time of year for another part of our community, which is stewardship season. Now, stewardship really is something that needs to be practiced 365 days a year because stewardship is not simply about money, not simply about the funding of the parish. It's about living out the gifts that God has given us in this community, a community of loving people. Over the past week, I've noticed just how this community, even if it isn't comprehensive, is reaching out to try and be. So if you look in our announcement sheet, yes, you'll see things like the Thanksgiving dinners that we are trying to fund. During the past week, we delivered uh, a prayer shawl to somebody who was in need and needed that affirmation of their life as a spiritual life. We're going to bless another prayer shawl this morning because we have another person in our community who has desired it. We have two prayer shawls sitting downstairs to offer as gifts. 
that have been blessed during this past week's morning prayer. Loving our neighbor is to figure out ways to stretch ourselves in two ways. To reach out to the people who have come to this community seeking God, both challenge ourselves to see God through their eyes as well as our own, and then to reach even beyond our community to value the neighbors who haven't come into our place yet. All of this takes sustenance. And over the next three weeks, you'll be hearing witnesses about how St. Francis has impacted the lives of our own parishioners, people who've come to us for help, succor, who are there so that we can be there for bringing children into our faith through baptism, through adults acknowledging the same witness, all the way to walking with people who are coming to the end of their lives. That's the kind of broad and comprehensive community that God is looking for. To minister to those who belong to it and to seek those who need ministry beyond it. Jesus faced the challenges from within his own community to express that God loved them. And he showed this love through giving them the law and the prophets. And then Jesus embodied the law and the prophets perfectly, faithfully. His community was comprehensive, but flawed like our own. His community could not hear all the things God was telling it. We need to listen carefully. And then if we know something, we need to follow through. Jesus reminds us of what the people of God have known for at least 3,000 years that there are two great commandments in this world. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your strength. And to show that love through loving your neighbor as yourself. We continue this morning with the Apostles' Creed, which begins on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers begin on page 97. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A are found on page 97 in the Book of Common Prayer. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. 
Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among the nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect of the Day is for Proper 25 from page 235. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain your promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A colic for Sundays. O oh God, you have made us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for mission is added from page 101. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. We continue with the authorized intercessions. For the peace of the world and for the unity of all peoples. For Armenia, Azerbaijan, Valerius, China, Hong Kong, Israel, Nigeria, the Palestinian Authority, Turkey, and the Ukraine. For the welfare of the Holy Church of God. For the people of the Anglican Communion, the Episcopal Church, the Diocese of Virginia, the Northern Fairfax region of the Diocese of Virginia, and the Diocese of Ezo. For our bishops and for all the clergy and people. Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, Presiding Bishop of the Episcopal Church, Susan, Jennifer, and Porter, Bishops of the Diocese of Virginia, John, Bishop of the Diocese of Ezo, and for the lay ministers of St. Francis Church. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authorities. The members of the U.S. Senate, the members of the House of Representatives, justices and judges of the judicial branch, the governor of Virginia, the members of the legislature of Virginia, and the candidates running for elected office. Especially for Joe, Donald, Joe, Mark, Daniel, Jennifer, and Alicia. For Great Falls and its neighboring towns, for every city and community, and for those who live in them. for the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it. For those who serve our nation in the Army, Air Force, Coast Guard, firefighters, first responders, Marines, Navy, police, and Space Force. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and the suffering. Kathy, Kristen, Louise, Geraldine, Elizabeth, Alice, Henry, Kel, Hans, Karen, Roy, Magda, Juliana, Clara Sue, Roland, Judy, Eileen, Sharon, Jeff, Lenora, John, Catherine, Teresa, Dorothy Jane, Stuart, Laura, Tony, and Richard. 
for all who have died, especially for Judy Elliott and Mary Davis, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. And for those who mourn for their loved ones, Mike, Mike Elliott, husband of Judy, and Linda Davis, daughter of Mary, may they be comforted by your Holy Spirit. For the joys of this life, we give you thanksgiving. This morning, we remember for birthdays, Julia Fallon, Phil Pfeiffer, and Dutt Brown. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Julia, Phil, and Dutt, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We also remember the anniversaries of the marriage vows of Lynn and Lori Beer, 18 years. Send your blessing upon your servants, Lynn and Lori, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. This morning, we, can, we are blessing another prayer shawl. Dear God, a multitude, a great multitude, which no one could number from every nation and tribe and people and tongue, stand before your throne and before the Lamb. You have clothed us with the garment of salvation. You have covered us with the robe of righteousness. O oh God, before those heavenly, before whose heavenly throne your servants minister to you, clothed in their garments of glory. Accept this prayer shawl, which we dedicate for the use of a person in need, that serving you before your earthly throne, they may worship you in spirit and in truth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we sum up our prayers with the general thanksgiving, which begins on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And together we sing hymn 657, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, verses 1 and 2.
Glory to God, whose power work, working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Ready?